So first let's work on the head of our hammer and for the head all we'll have to do is oh, come on really what's the what's the first scene seen of our cgi budget just run out and re on the first scene fine you know what? fine it's fine it's fine it's fine we'll just we'll <laughs> we'll just do it the boring way okay so all now this is a fire hammer, which means we'll need some sort of ignition system, and so that's what we'll start. The ignition system will be in a head, because that's where the fire will go. And basically, ignition system sounds really professional and stuff, but it's really simple. Just like a lighter has the gas, it also needs something to ignite the gas. That's the really famous click that you hear when the lighter is being lit. And so all we have to do is basically do this, in this with two problems in like this it's really simple when you push the button the force gets turned into electricity this creates a spark and boom magic fire but in our hammer we need it to be a tad more reliable why well because we will not have a system for uh, the gas we won't have a single valve or anything like it so uh, if our ignition system won't work on the first try, on the second try there might be too much gas um, and the head might explode. So we should make it quite reliable. Now what that basically means is that instead of powering it with a button, we will use a battery because that's way more reliable and it also means that we'll have to calculate stuff to make sure that it will work because you know Blowing yourself up with a fire hammer is a fun way to go But I still have to reach 10 million subscribers, so we're not doing it yet. Anyway Let's do the thing, right? Okay, so there's a problem. Why is there a problem? Well, because we need to create a spark. You already knew that, I already explained it, but there is a problem with the spark. You see, in order to create a spark in the air, for each centimeter of the spark size, you need around 30 kilovolts of energy. Considering that our gap would be the size of one millimeter, we would need three kilovolts or three thousand volts which is not a little so how can we achieve it well in order to achieve it all we need is a battery and resistors but how well in order to answer that question we'll need to use some math and it's actually really easy. All we have to do is use these two equations. Power is equal to voltage times current and voltage is equal to resistance times current. 
Now all we do is just basic maths, which means we multiply both sides by voltage, and now that we know that voltage times current is equal to power, we just replace that with power, we square root it on both sides, and there we go. Now we know that voltage is also equal to square root of resistance times power. Now all you have to do is just plug in our variables. Now each battery has 1.5 volts, and when it comes to its current, it has 5.6 amperes. We multiply that, and then we get the power per each battery. Then we multiply that by 20, because we have 20 batteries, and there we go. This is our power from all of the batteries. Which means we just plug that into our equation, and considering that we need 3000 volts to create a spark, we also add the 3000, because that's the voltage we want to get. Now, after just a bit of transforming normal math, we get this, which is the resistance required to create a spark out of our 20 batteries. Now, I should also mention that 53,000 ohms seems like a lot, but we could achieve that with only 6 of those resistors. These 6 resistors have a combined resistance of 60,000 ohms, so it's actually not that much. And so there we go! But I did start this with saying uh, we have a problem, so what's the problem? Well, we used this equation, we used this equation, but what about these two? That's our problem. Now the first equation is just pure physical unit conversion, so we shouldn't worry about that. Uh, but the second equation is important, because the second equation tells us how much energy are we losing on resistors. How much energy are we losing on those resistors that we added. And so after dividing both sides by time, and after you know adding just all the numbers in, it tells us that we need 600 million watts. That's how much it would be consumed by, by our resistors to after we start the circuit. Yeah. And so according to my rough calculations, I might have gotten something wrong considering that, you know, I calculated it very late at night. We would need around 33.5 million watts over 35 and a half million watts just to start the circuit and 35 million watts is not achievable with any fancy tricks that i don't have any tricks for that i i just don't maybe maybe something with capacitors maybe but i don't have that many capacitors i am <laughs> I don't have that many electrical stuff. Uh, that means we need to go for a plan B. What's our plan B? Well, <coughs> well, doing it like a lighter. Exactly like a lighter, because with a lighter, like this. That's how we'll do it. Listen, I'm sorry, but I'm doing weekly uploads, okay? I could finish the hammer the correct way with a button and everything, but for that, I would need to wait for parts for like a week or two weeks and then I'll have to test those parts, I'll have to build a prototype, I'll have to do actual science. So yeah, um, we'll just have to wing it because I'm doing weekly uploads. I Last video I made was about safety and I mean just Now for the fuel, I will use the exact same thing that I used in my safety video. And listen, here's the thing. Whilst I know that what I did in the safety video, some experts might call it, you know, irresponsible. That's not good. But once I'll tell you what substance it was that created the fire, the experts will call it extremely irresponsible. So this is calcium carbide and we don't actually care about calcium carbide. After we add water to calcium carbide, it releases a lot of heat and a couple of chemicals, the most important of which is acetylene. 
Now when we're adding water to calcium carbide, you have to remember that water is just H2O and it just so happens that calcium carbide is calcium with carbon. So after we added the 2H2O, it is 2H2O, remember to balance your chemical equations, just bond with the calcium in such a way that from each and every single one of them, we leave one hydrogen behind, which then goes to carbon to create acetylene, the exact thing that we need. Now acetylene is really convenient. It is a welding gas because it's just so damn hot. 3600 degrees Kelvin or 3330 degrees Celsius or 6020 degrees Fahrenheit. This, this right here, the, the thing that I hold, that I held in my hand. Yeah, that's fire. That, that's how hot a stilling is. Now, yes, it is a welding gas because it's really hot when it burns. Yep, and that's why I love calcium carbide, because after we add water to it, you know, it's really cool. And we'll use it to power up our fire hammer. So imagine this, except a lot more. Oh boy, there's a fire here, I better extinguish it. No, we're not doing that bit again, we are not doing that bit again. This is dangerous, by the way. Don't do it unless you are qualified, okay? This chemistry is pretty dangerous, right? It, it just is. So, yeah. It's also toxic, by the way. And burning very aggressively. Alright, so now that we got the fuel and the ignition system kind of figured out, I suppose, it's time to get on the construction, to actually connect the rod to the head. And in order to do it, we will have to figure out something. Uh, we can use nails, it's not wood, it's metal. Glue is also a bad idea because, you know, it has to stay strong, really, really strong. What can I use? Because honestly, I don't think there are that many options left. Or maybe... Yeah, I, I just welded them in. And you know, it, not gonna lie, it was my first weld in my life, but... It holds, so there you go. So the entire thing is built. Now the only thing left to do is to take it for a test run. And for that, we'll have to fill it with calcium carbide. See you there. And so just like that, our fire hammer is done. Now, obviously it's missing a few parts. It's, you know, the ignition system is not really there, but, you know, in real life, when you're working on a project, you usually do only have a finite amount of time and more often than not that amount of time is shorter than you would have liked so if you're working on many projects you just have to get used to the fact that you will not be able to finish them perfectly but still we tried we did our best we proved everything mathematically and we got the fuel we built the hammer so in my opinion we did build a weapon.
And so there we go. See Susie, I told you, you do not need education for a good video. Entertainment is overrated anyway. I mean, yeah, the audience learns, but who cares about that, mate? It's about the clicks, it's about the clicks. So it's good to finally make a video, you know, without caring about edutainment that much. No need to hide some secret knowledge in it. For example, how to count for energy loss in physics, or chemistry with acetylene, or how to actually do projects and not be disappointed with the results, because the results are always gonna be flawed. Wait. Fuck! I would like to make the art segment a bit more personal because, well, <laughs> I do kind of need it. Yes, this video was made in a week and I do mean the entire video. I recorded everything this week, I made the hammer in a week, I planned in the week, I did, did all the animations, everything, in seven days. And it was, let me just tell you, a lot of work. Hence why the ad segment is so weird with me just casually walking around at night. It's for a couple of reasons, actually. First of all, today is the day of the upload. Today the video will go live. I am still <laughs> rendering a couple of things. But once they render, I just throw them in there and there we go, video's finished. Get everything done, I have to put an all-nighter, that's why I'm walking at night. Just get some fresh air because I did spend the entire day just walking on the video. <laughs> now I know that many YouTubers probably already say it, but in this case it really is important. I genuinely would really appreciate if you could support me on Patreon and maybe join my Discord, talk with me, because here's the thing, these, listen, <laughs> these videos take a lot of time, and I still do work, I, they, these are not, they are not my job, it's not my job to make videos, I have 50 subscribers, so <laughs> my income from YouTube is in the negative. I work as a CGI artist, and this entire YouTube thing is just, I would say, a hobby, which takes up more time than my actual work. That's why I would really appreciate it if you could help me, because <laughs> it's not easy. Now, second of all, I would really like to thank you all. I have many things to say today, and we're getting into the dark region, so I guess that would be some good time for some on-screen stuff. First of all, I would really like to thank everyone from my Discord server, and especially the so-called channel regulars, <laughs> as Soda nicely called them, and Soda. So, yeah, I did thank Soda in the outro, because I am still using Soda's music. It's great, it's amazing, and I will still use it for a really, really long time. But then Crimpy and Elliot are, well, keeping me alive. <laughs> so Crimpy is amazing. Crimpy is amazing, he is with me on my streams most of the time, which I thank you so, thanks so much for that crazy because I'm guessing you're watching this right now. And Elias, the mad lad Elliot, who at some point was responsible for 98% of all of my channel's exposure, because this is a new channel and when I started the channel, Elliot watched every single video, commented on, I'm pretty sad in every single one, and <laughs> watched, I think, watched one of the videos on repeat three times at 0.25% speed. So, Crimfy Elliot, here's to you lads. I just realized you can't really see anything in my hand, so that visual joke didn't make much sense. Then I would also really like to thank you all for 50 subscribers. Yes, we're on 50 right now. This, not gonna lie, I... I am doing weekly uploads, but before I was doing weekly uploads, when I was doing uploads every second day, I planned to uh, make the Make It Builds a Weapon as my 50 subscribers special. 
then I realized that my videos suck and there would be no way I would have enough time to make this so special so that's why I switched to every week and also at the same time you know the, the entire build weapon thing explosions and stuff that that's the that's the special part I won't be doing as many explosions because these jokes get stale really fast so gotta keep them fresh anyway that'll be it I yeah, it's really dark here. It's really awkward. I have to say goodbye in a place like this. But there we go. That's the weirdest thank you for watching you'll ever get. <laughs> thank you everyone for 50 subscribers. Slowly but surely, we're getting there. So, love you all. Thank you everyone so much for watching. And have a great day. Bye.